and I make a green recording so that we just have a backup. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, wonderful. So I'm back. I'm still sharing the keynote. So again, hi, welcome, Jacob. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Welcome, please, everybody. everyone, also the new one. Uh, please mute your mics until uh, yeah, we have some conversation. See there are many new people dropping in with yes unmuted so mics. It is going to. It's a large. We're a large group today, so you need to go on mute unless um, there's something happening really, really, very emergency. But uh, of course, please sit back and relax and just get ready for what we've prepared for you. 50 days of keynote, 50 lessons learned. I am Alicia Bankofa. This is the ADE Festival of Learning. Woot, woot. I'm sure everybody misses the woot woot. Am I right? At the Institute? Yes, Carol, it is very good to see everybody in class. Who are we? Jacob, who are you? Yeah, so I am. Uh, I have been a teacher for 10 years and now I'm doing a little bit more of independent consultancy and APLS work. But I love Keynote, mm -hmm. so I was super happy when Alicia reached out to me about this uh, exciting project. I must admit that Alicia and uh, Laura and a couple of the others made the main part of the work. So I also said she is the star. I'm just her assistant today. Okay, thank you. And who am I? I am an English teacher primarily, but of course I wear several hats. So I'm also responsible for digital literacy at my school. I help to coach teachers as well. So it's loads of fun, as I'm sure most of you who do the same thing <laughs> know that it's lots of fun to, to help our fellow teachers to get into the technology to support learning. Right. So, hmm... Keynote. We're here because of Keynote. Christoph already said he loves Keynote. Everybody who loves Keynote, well, who, please clear your love for Keynote in the chat if you'd like. Um, we did, I decided to start the presentation with this really cool, just a few impulses, two of which were done only last week since the new Keynote update. And maybe we can even make a game out of this, Jacob. I want to know if you think you know who made these wonderful keynote uh, things. Yeah. We have uh, some of the things uh, that, are, um, that, that inspired me personally. Uh, Jacob, do you think you recognize any of them? I can see one of them from Laura Wright. Yes. In Little Riding Hood, that's definitely her style. And the one in the right corner, I have used in some of my slides as well. So I know right. that one is great. <laughs> um, by the way, guys, we're going to send you the um, the slide deck afterwards. We will also tell you who, who did these wonderful things. Yeah. This is uh, also a keynote. So you can see keynote has no problem just creating like a video wall if you want to, if you want to show me something like that just different things that are going on um, either in the classroom or even in your school. Yeah. So Jacob, can you maybe give our guests, the kind colleagues today who joined us, what is in store for them this afternoon? So uh, you'll share a little bit, or Alicia uh, will share a little bit of the backstory behind the 50 days of keynote, how it, uh, yeah, how she started the idea and the backstory. And then we are going to share some of our favorite uh, keynote tips and tricks that got shared during those 50 days. And uh, maybe also a little bit of uh, looking into some of the updates. But I was really intrigued by uh, people that dare to take on those 50 days or 90 day challenges. Um, so I'm happy that Alicia now will tell us a little bit about the story behind it and how yeah. it all started. Yes, thank you for your question. So, of course, we are a community. We inspire each other. We, we, we encourage each other. So, I have to say this idea was born because I was inspired by um, fellow ADEs. As you can see here on the slide, um, three people did the, the 90 Days of GarageBand that I'm aware of. Of course, it could have been more. I don't, I don't know. Uh, anybody in the chat wants to say if they followed any of the 90 Days of GarageBand projects that went on last year? There was one done by you, Owen. There was one done by Mary. And there was one done by Erica. Yeah, so John is saying he, he followed it. 
Um, and specifically Keynote came out, the idea came out of um, something that Megan Ryder started. She did a 30 days of Keynote, but in the, in the style of um, tutorials. So like, what can we do? What, what are the functions of Keynote? So that's where it all started, actually. Um, I just got the idea to do that at that time, right? Um, a little bit of the backstory you said, Jacob. Uh, for those of you who did not follow back then, we did do it on Twitter. As you know, this is our favorite place to hang out. The ADEs love to hang out on Twitter. Of course, we are also on Facebook or other things as well, but we love to hang out on Twitter. So I did have this idea way back before Corona. Um, little did we know, am I right? Um, innocent times. Um, and I asked for people who wanted to collaborate on this project. Anybody wants to do 50 days of keynote? And then we got a, a nice little group together. And the goal was really simple. We wanted to, to publish a video a day for 50 days. And the focus was really not less on the things that keynote can do, like the functions or the features. It was more, what can you create for the class? Because I noticed in my area, at least, some teachers just think, oh, Keynote is presentation shop, stop, software, full stop. Right? I don't know, is it the same thing in, in your end, Jacob, or anybody else? People think that Keynote is for presentations, am I right? Hopefully, we are joined by people today that uh, see many more possibilities. Yes. And uh, I like that about your project initially, that it was all about how to use Keynote in other ways than for presentations. Yes. So this was, this was the big, big reason why uh, I felt, well, it's, there's a need for teachers when they need to do something, why do they go to um, different things? Why do they need, why do they use different tools? Why not just use just simply Keynote to get the job done? Yeah. And I see one in the comments a list saying Keynote is for everything. And that's exactly right. Yeah. I have found a thing where you can't use Keynote. It's true. <laughs> It's true. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the planning phase of it, uh, Jacob, because you were part of the project. So, oh, let me just see if I can just, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit how we, how we worked in, the, in behind, behind the scenes in case somebody here wants to take on a similar project, like a, you know, collaborative team kind of thing going on. How did we get ourselves organized? I think it's uh, maybe a bit mean that I should explain this because I think I was the one creating a bit of chaos from time to time. But we were a small group um, of seven ADEs that, uh, that went together and a lot of collaboration where we had a shared numbers file here where, you can, where we could uh, add in which days we had possible to, to make, create those videos. Yes, we just lost your audio, Jacob. I'm not sure. We did lose you. Am I right? We can't hear you. Now we. I think you're back now. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. Good. I think I had pulled the cords in my my mic. Uh -huh. Okay. So we were the the the, the numbers um, document were absolutely our backbone. And then I think we were in daily chatting together over Messenger's uh, the iMessage app. And I think that was totally uh, important. And it was so nice to be in a project where we actually could take turns so that everyone had a couple of days uh, from time to time where they didn't need to produce any tutorials. Yes, exactly that. That's exactly it. Um, so I just copied a few screenshot, a few of the tweets. So everybody, we, we all did a great job. I have to say, I have to give ourselves a, a tap on the back because we did manage to post, post, a tweet every day of these 50 days showing what our daily thing was. And these are just some of some of the screenshots where you can see, you can see how we did it. And we did put it on a Padlet. I'm going to ask you, Jacob, if it's okay for you, can you please copy the Padlet link? Because somebody stuff has asked for you to have the Padlet link in the um, in the chat. Oh, that's the chat. Yeah. Give me a second. I'll try to find it. No problem. Yeah. So this is what it looked like daily. So now, as Jacob has said, we are going to show you a few of our favorite things, and of course, we would like to hear from you afterwards. So please. 
uh, get ready. I, I'm sure you're you've you've had a lot of experience with different with different things, maybe even with keynote, different things. So feel free to either now you can post in the chat or we can talk about this in a discussion around later. So someone needs to mute their mic so that I can continue with my thing. Great, cool, wonderful. We're so good. So my first favorite thing I wanted to show you, of course, the bad news, guys, we're not going to be able to go through all the 50 things today. There's no time. We would have to be speed speakers, uh, speedy speakers. That's not possible, right? But we're going to be able to focus on a few. And I think there are a few that people tend not to really remember. Yeah. So my, one of my favorite things are mind maps. And as you can see, I created this little animation in Keynote. I used just the drawing tools with my Apple Pencil. And I just, you know, it's a, a really cool mind map. And as you know, you educators know mind maps are really great ways to show um, how things are structured, how things are connected. And in Keynote, it's ideal because you can use um, the drawing tools, but you could also use um, text and shapes and lines and connectors. And what I really, really like about Keynote, what not many people know, is that you can actually connect two objects with each other, with each other, with each other sorry, and they, they move around when you move around the objects. Look, <laughs> it's really cool. This works with either drawn objects that you do yourself or with shapes that you, that you create. So you can easily... Um, create like a mind map template for your students and say, okay, guys, uh, I'd like you to create a mind map. This is how mind maps work. I'd like you to create connections and create a structure where you can tell me how this, this topic or this topic works. And what's cool also is you can even format how the lines look. You can, you can add an arrow to the end. You can, of course, have no arrows. You, they, they, you can, you know, just be creative, go crazy, be creative. So this is what I really like about um, about the mind map or even concept maps. Concept maps are slightly different things um, with mind um, as mind. Maps. It's more or less uh, like a like a brain, a brainstorming thing. And what I thought I would do, maybe I'm not sure if many of you have uh, experience doing a mind map or a, a mind chart or a decision tree using Keynote. Why don't we just take maybe one minute time? Yeah, I'm going to be going to give you one minute time to see if you can draw a flow chart. I'm going to say go in a minute. And I'd like you to try your hand at either mind map or a flow chart. Here I gave you a suggestion. Um, should schools reopen in September? Some people are living in countries where this is actually a question. Uh, and we can maybe even practice this. What is it like to build a decision tree? Yeah, you start with the you start with the with the question, yeah, with the statement or with the premise, and you know you have to have an end. So the end is going to be either yes, no, yeah, or a statement, and you have to build your decision tree with different um, deciding factors in the middle. So I'm going to just give you one minute, just to see if you can sketch maybe with your iPad and with your pencil, um, just to just draft. It doesn't have to look fancy. Um, what a decision tree looks like. Of course, you, if you would, I'm, I'm going to say go. So go. And I'm going to set a timer on my, on my iPhone so we can remind, so I can remind you. And of course, if you don't, you don't have to do this question. So my timer's up. I'm doing it the old fashioned way with the timer with the iPhone. Um, you don't have to do this question. You can do another question. Other ideas are, as I have in this um, link down here for flowcharts, um, you can do, for example, if you are grammar, if you're teaching grammar, for example, adjective or adverb. Yeah. Okay. Then you have to think about which branches. Oh, is it before a noun? Is it before a verb? Does it have L-Y? You know, really, really simple, simple flow charts that we can use with our students. Yeah. Has anybody actually used a flow chart before in class? Maybe they like to just to, uh, write in the chat. Have you created a flow chart at Keynote? That would be maybe interesting to, to find out. If not, you have time, of course. Get inspired for next year. So we're actually coming up, coming up to the, the minute is already gone. As you can see. Yeah. 
I hope you got a, a little bit of a, of a, of a, um, yeah, Dr. 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 Larry, I'm going to call him Dr. Larry. He has an idea using Kino to demonstrate the diagramming of sentences. Of course, por supuesto, bien sûr. That is a, a perfect idea. So you can see, you can just go crazy with the structured elements um, in Keynote. So that's enough about me. My first favorite thing, Jacob. What's your favorite? What's what is your first favorite thing you wanted to share with our fellow ADs today? Yeah. Um, then I need you to jump one slide forward. Yeah. Oh, it hasn't updated. Um, yeah. When I looked. Um, on all the exciting things that we have been through over the 50 days, I think one of the things that I really liked was to use uh, Keynote for uh, prototyping. And we shared two prototyping uh, ideas. And one of them were Laura, who shared how to prototype an app. Um, and I shared uh, a little bit later, a week later, how to prototype uh, a web page idea. So this, yeah, this one. Please jump forward a slide. Ah, now now it's going. Now it's coming. All of your things, yeah. Okay. Shall I press play now? Uh, yeah. Here's just a little bit of Laura's uh, video. How she During draws out. Uh, um, highlight what they want to do using a mind map, and then I'll start to get them to actually draw it out. What is it going to look like? How is it going to work? Get them really planned. Oh, I'm sorry. That, that am I supposed to jump fast or forward already? Is it okay? Uh, yeah, let's do that. So um, here we see one of my uh, students. Oh, sorry, one slide back. Yeah. I think it's probably going going on co continuing normally. So I'm going to go here now. Sorry. Yeah. So this is an example on uh, on the video. You see uh, iPhone. But it's not uh, a real app. It's an uh, app that uh, some of my students, they prototyped in Keynote. Wow. And if you are creating a slideshow um, where the slides are the same pixels or format than uh, an iPhone, for example, when you are playing that Keynote on your iPhone, it will fill it out. So some of the uh, test subjects even didn't notice that it wasn't a real app because even the, the first page with all the apps on it was a Keynote slide. So, so they were in that ecosystem or in that full. So I think that's just a really great way to, uh, and, and Laura also in her video shows how the students can um, change the, the, uh, the format of the slides, but I think it's so important to use the custom slides. So if you jump one uh, slide forward to the next one. So I often with my students uh, share that slide that you can see on the iPad here, where they can see all the dimensions of the current uh, iPads and iPhones and a small uh, explanation on how they set up their slide format uh, for the devices they want to support. But I can really, really um, encourage everyone to use uh, Keynote as prototyping and then get all those uh, links uh, so that, yeah, you can get that interactivity into your, to your Slide. And you can start out with just some rough sketches and then finalize or, or continue. So, and one of the things that often has um, been interesting to see when students work on a Mac or a bigger iPad with that design and then suddenly test it out on their iPhone that they then discover how small everything is. So that's also a good process to get the feeling of how, how big the bottom should be uh, compared to the, your thumb and so on. So I'm going to have to jump yes. in here, Jack Jacob, and I'm going to have to ask you, where did you get this cool information? What the, what the dimensions are? are those That looks like a really handy slide to, to screenshot and keep. Huh? Am I right, guys? It's a screenshot from Apple's own uh, Apple support page. So. Uh, okay, cool. So great. I have all that. Thank you. Next. And back to you. Yeah. One more. Ah, okay. Here is just the QR codes for Laura's original video about uh, app prototyping, and then um, my video on also the design process behind uh, a prototype that I then made on day eighteen. I can see so. If people want to find those, they yes. do it now or like. 
Yes, and as 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 Jacob already posted the Padlet link, we collected all of the links on the Padlet so that people can just go back and see the whole list is on the Padlet, and we'll also give you the link to we created a book and it's on the bookstore that you can download. We'll give you the link to that later. Yeah, but for now, please focus, please focus because we're gonna check out a few more ideas. I hope you bear with us. Yeah. So Jacob, may I continue? Oh, Christoph said he's got the yeah. book. That's it. I think it's that. It's, yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Your second. <laughs> so what, one of my, the second favorite thing of mine I wanted to show you today is I'm going I'm to be honest. The changes to Keynote since last week, they're just two, maybe some people would say maybe minor changes, but they have huge impl implications for what kind of video tutorials we can create in future. I just, I had to steal some really cool ideas that I saw that were shared on Twitter. So I hope these colleagues are not mad at me for, a, for, for showing what they've done. They've done a great job. On the left, you have Michael Henderson. On the right, you have Owen Hughes. They have shown how you can use the video that plays across all the slides to create a really, really cool video tutorial. So Michael has shown how to do it with one video and just with objects on different slides that are animated. And Owen is just showing how you can even create your own lyric poster if you want, because he's just playing his song and he's just putting the, the chords and he's just putting the lyrics. So I guys, can I, can I, can you please give it up for Michael and Owen? I know them, them they're not on the call, but maybe they look at the recording. Please give Michael and Owen some love on Twitter, but also maybe in the in the in the in the in the chat. Very nice. Thank you very much, John. Please. They, it's really great to see how the community comes together and as soon as something new comes out, it's like, woo, let's go. Let's do this, right? Pimp your video tutorials. We can't wait to see what people are gonna do with the great, great two new these two new functions that have come out in Crino. So I'm not going to say anything else. Video tutorials on Keynote, please. Jacob, what else do you have to show us? What's your favorite number yeah. two? So, so I'm my asking, let me just ask you for a second. Should I, do you want to share your slides? Because I think you've updated yours. Is it better? Uh, no, I think we'll just stay in yours because okay. I'm on the iPad. Okay. Living the iOS only lifestyle right now. Okay, sorry. <laughs> oh, it has. Oh, it's updated. Great. Oh, Great. Good. We love um, the technology when technology works. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so my uh, second favorite, um, it was hard to decide between all those 50. So I have uh, yeah, taken three, uh, three of the different uh, tips that were got, sh got shared. And uh, Emma Oxley Simpson was the first to create something about explainer videos and has made a really great video for, for that. And when I thought about which tips I thought were really useful, I love to use Keynote in ways where it is the students who get the producers or the creators yes. instead of, as we said, uh, that they just consume the content from them. So I really love all everything that can um, by the students create. So, so Emma uh, made a, a video about explainer videos uh, and Laura followed up the day after on how to make smaller explainer videos maybe, but as a GIF, uh, exported as GIF. And then I had a couple of days later, uh, uh, one about also animations in general. So let's jump to the next slide. Oops, sorry. I think it's because it's a link. Um, let's go to the next slide. Yes. Mm -hmm. So here's just a couple of clips from Emma's own explainer video. And here it is uh, uh, something about how to bake pancakes. Oh. Um, and I just find it super neat how she shows how you can combine drawings and shapes and so on. And, and I think for, for many teachers, it's easy to see how they could use this in their subject. So. I think that was uh, uh, yeah. That looks great. Like a great from her. Looks like and a great video. Slide. Yes. Oh, sorry. I I, I have to. I am having so much fun looking at all these things. I'm getting I'm getting confused. Yes. Shape and then choosing the animation. 
Um, I've also added move to mind so that things will move about automatically. So you can play cool. with the transitions of the actual slides themselves to make things animate and move around really nicely. Um, oh, and then what yeah, on this a sound on it. thing is then um, choosing the export button using the three dots at the top right corner. And when you export, awesome. you to export oh, sorry, sorry. Just make sure. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um, <laughs> But it was just to give you also a taste on how uh, uh, Laura had uh, narrated it. And here it is about the water cycle. But they make really lovely GIF animations for that. And it's, uh, I think, also a very handy uh, format to, to hand in for the teacher, uh, not as heavy as a video. And, and also they need to really condense the most valuable knowledge uh, to make an efficient uh, GIF. Uh, so I think that's really good. And if you jump uh, one slide forward. Yep. Here it was just a, a, a very recent glimpse. It showed us how we now can with this uh, path, uh, motion path uh, animation, uh, now can create new motion paths. So she made this very fun uh, little example on how we can use it as this coding maze. Uh, I love that very much. And I tried to show uh, the difference on the next slide. So until now, we could make this motion path, like the first bee is flying here, but it's in the same direction all the time. And now we can actually make it so it follows the path and flies uh, more naturally. So if you go one forward, so you can see when you are selecting a motion path, now you can uh, put on and off this align to path tool. And I think that will create some really interesting new ways to use this motion path uh, animation in the future. And next slide, please. Oh, that's it. Am ah, I then it's back to you. That back was... to me. And um, before we just move on, I just wanted to say thank you so much again to everybody in the community. It's just like just exploring ways how to use the align to path the new Align to Path feature in Keynote. If you haven't tried it out yet, try it out. Think about ways you can use it with your students. You can use it for natural phenomenon. You can use it for, like Jacob just showed, Lindsay's example um, with, the, with the maze, kind of like going through a maze. So loads of, I'm, I'm sure, loads of potential. So the last thing that's at least coming from me, the last thing coming from me, um, my absolute favorite that I really, I, I just had to share this. Of course, as I said, no time to go through all 50 ideas, but I had to say, I love how Keynote gives us the chance to create lovely textbooks and workbooks. So these are actually four things I created last year, last school year. Um, to, and I said I, I teach English and I teach also digital literacy. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of a, a teaser and, and an idea, an impression of what kind of um, materials I create. So this is something, for example, I created in Keynote and I sent it to all the, the student iPads. We don't have one-to-one -one iPads to answer your question, Paul. We have shared iPads. It means I have a trolley in the in the school. I have 30, 30 iPads for 1,000 students. So I have to, you know what I mean? I have to like book the iPads. I assign the iPads at the, at the beginning of the year. So everybody knows, okay, I have, this is my iPad. And I get to work on their workbooks or on their different things. Re re reviewing stuff um, on the iPad. And this is, for example, on, on tenses, how to do tenses in English. And here was the additional thing from Tino just to add the audio or the video. Or if you can take a look at the, this thing I created down here. So, sorry, this is going on. Um, this is um, a, a workbook that I created for for teachers, actually. For teachers to understand what computational thinking is. It's I know some some people don't understand exactly that it's actually something that we do every day. So I created a really cool workbook that I use in my teacher training workshops to help especially language teachers understand what computational thinking is. And this is really cool in Keynote. You can use all the text and the, and, and everything just to, um, all the text boxes, objects and audio, etc., just to, to get them onto that. And as you can see, um, I have a grammar workbook. So, I mean, I, I don't want to bore you with grammar. I mean, I love grammar, but not everybody does. So um, this is a grammar workbook that I created for revision for my class. It was 14-year-olds this year. So they were doing lots of, you know, adv well, advanced stuff. And we also did Charlie and the Chocolate Factory last year. So I created this really cool 
document. It was, by the way, inspired by Jamie Clark. I mean, Jamie Clark, who does prolific things uh, with Keynote. I mean, he's like, okay, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm only just now learning how to do things like he does. Um, where you can more or less tap on the on the on the character in the in the book, and it will take you to a character page. It's like an interactive presentation, so to speak, and students can then do the activity on the slide and then give it up at the end. So I hope you get you got an, a nice idea what kind of things are possible with Keynote, and I'm sure I'll be evolving this idea as as I as I go on. What else do you have in uh, in store? What what is your idea, uh, Jacob? What would yeah. you like to share again? I have just a question. Uh, or, yes. or would, uh, if we go one slide back. Yeah. So first, I really also love Jamie's uh, character uh, book, and it was also on my list. If I should pick three, uh, <laughs> it was a run up. And um, again, once again, I think really interesting to explore those interactive links. But we got a question in the chat about uh, the funds here. Yeah. Do you know if all the the, the, the typefaces used here are if they are free yes, or are already free. on the iPad? Or no, they're not on the iPad. I think um, Jamie sometimes use extra uh, funds and, and install them. But uh, yeah, yeah. So as soon if anyone as wants, we can catch up yes. later. Anybody? I mean, there are uh, Matt Pullen, by the way, who's maybe still on the call. I think if I'm, I'm not mistaken, he created a video on how to add fonts to the as a custom fonts to the iPad. Uh, Matt, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not sure. Uh, there are videos out there. It's really easy. You have to have a third party app. And you find the font at the usual places, dafont.com. You download the font. For this this font here, the Luna font is what I, I really love for titles, for headings. I was It was Jack, Jacob. Thank you very much, Matt. It was Jacob Wilcock who did that one. So just look on YouTube. Look on Jacob Wilcock's uh, YouTube channel, and he shows you how to add it. It's really easy. Yeah. But everything else that I use are free fonts, of course. I don't pay for fonts. <laughs> Um, let me see. Julie is saying, okay. can I share the website? Hmm. Which website do you mean, Julie? Yeah. Yeah. Google to his YouTube. Yeah. Oh, YouTube. Yeah. So uh, in the end of the presentation, there will be links both for the yeah. Padlet and uh, the book as well. And uh, we will, of course, share it. And if, if anyone is in a country where they can't access the bookstore, we will also find a way to. Yes. That you course. can exit. Yeah, with you. Good. Let's jump to uh, forward. Yes, I'm. I, I'm jumping forward, forward, but I have just to wait for the animations to finish. Yeah. <laughs> ah, okay. So, my uh, last tip here would, uh, and it was hard to decide, but this was uh, around scrolling uh, credits. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes, uh, because it's it's it's, uh, uh, it's linked. Yeah, so, right? just an idea here, and what I really find intriguing was to remember how. Keynote also can be a tool for creating some apps that you are then are going to use in, in other apps as well. So uh, she shared an example on scrolling uh, title that then uh, showed up in, um, uh, in the project. So let's continue. Uh, next one. slide. Yeah, next slide. Yes. If ah, now it's coming. It's, it's difficult okay. to know where to click because it's, sometimes he's he's linked. So, guys, when you get this yeah. keynote file, you'll be able to see all the links and everything, right? Okay, should I press play? So, uh, yeah. So because you can see the yeah, I'm just going to do it all in one slide. So the first thing I do is I get my text all correct as I'd like it to look. So I've centered it. I've made the font that I want it to look. Um, uh, so I know exactly what it's going to look like on the screen. Once I've done that, the tip is to zoom out so you can see the whole slide in one go and move to the text down to the bottom. From there, we're going to click and put animate and add action, and we're going to do a create path. Um, so once again, it might zoom us back in, and from there, we just want to zoom back out again so we can see as much of the slide as possible. And then we just drag the text box up to the top, um, and that creates our motion path. Uh, so you can see here, I need to zoom out just so I can get it right to the top so that actually we won't see the text once it's scrolled through. From that, all we need to do um, at that point is maybe change the duration so it slows it down a bit. I also change the acceleration so we don't have it easing in and out. It's all just in one uh, same um, length. From there, um, that's it. You're pretty much done. So once you've done that, you can click done at the top. Press the play button and you will see the text is now scrolling through. And that's as simple as to make your scrolling credits. 
Oh, perfect. I think uh, just shows again another way to uh, often we find us uh, some limitations when it comes to how to add text in um, an iMovie, and we can really solve that with uh, creating that part in in Keynote and, and create our overlay, and then use the green screen or, or blue screen or can subtract any color we want uh, uh, with that function and and make. Uh, Things there. So I just wanted to show a, a small example for myself. Mm -hmm. So on the left, you can see uh, an animation I made in using Keynote, and then in uh, iMovie, I put that uh, Keynote on top and then use the green screen function. And I can uh, hit to the next slide, and I should also use this video on video. Is it this? Am I subscribed? Yeah, it's fine. Wow. So, so just to show also what I really like for movie titles is actually to give this uh, hand-drawn feeling to it. Um, so I think that's really nice to be able to draw things in Keynote, add the line draw elements to it, have a distinct color as a background so that you can subtract it with the green screen feature. Um, very, very easy workflow. But now with the new video functionalities in Keynote, uh, where you can play a video over multiple slides, I think also we could just make uh, that part of a movie directly in Keynote and then export it um, and then embed it into our project. So two different ways to, to work around that right now. But I thought that was my final tip. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, there's been a lot of activity in the chat. Yes, there is. Um, you have a bonus. Um, yeah, there's a, a, a little bit of a... In, shall I show the... Welcome whole... to 50 Days this of is... Keynote. <laughs> My name is Jacob Hansen. And Maybe so... per pause it? I pause uh... it, yes. Was, was I talk... Oh, that was just for um, uh, using Keynote as a portfolio tool. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's maybe not the most creative uh, of the tips that we shared during uh, those 50 days, but I really like uh, to make the learning journey for my students visible and that they can look back at them. And I have been teaching design and coding, so it has uh, and, and, and entrepreneurship, so it's very project based often. But for them to see uh, the projects um, is quite nice. Um, so I don't think we will play the video because it's a little bit, a little, a little bit long. But if yes. we um... maybe I can fast forward. Oh, this looks lovely. Yeah, I'm fast for. I'm just fast forwarding. Here. This looks really cool. Maybe stop here. Yes, here. So here I, I just show how uh, in Keynote you can collapse uh, and organize your your slides. And I think students really like that that they can have that full content over a full year. The slideshow can sometimes some of my students they have at keynote presentations with 500 slides over the course of a, a, a 200 design hours. Uh, but they can then collapse and then easily navigate it still uh, and then build in those interactive links so you can see the yellow arrow in the right corner. That will always take them back to where that project starts and, and so on. So they can actually build in that navigation. Mm -hmm. um, so I find it really interesting tool. So when my students if it, we want to end up with a portfolio that could be uh, EPUB, for example, and be shared device diagnostic with uh, parents, for example. If that was the goal, I would maybe go for pages. Uh, but I think in general, when uh, here in, this, in my subjects, they also needed to show the portfolio in the exam situation. And for that, um, actually, it was really nice to use the keynote portfolio tool. Yes. Cool. Thank you so much. So you even you couldn't even decide on three. You decided to sneak in a, a fourth one. Am I right, <laughs> Jacob? <laughs> yes. But of course, there are many, many ideas to this. Two for yeah for the book and and 